following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Nativity of Christ. It is important for all of us to visualize, to understand, to comprehend what Christ is because there is a lot of uh, mistaken interpretations, assumptions of what uh, uh, Christ is and uh, also what the nativity is which uh, as you know is uh, in this day and age is called Christmas. This uh, Christmas or Christ word is rooted in the Greek language which in Greek is written with the letter with the letter uh, it has the form of an X It's called uh, uh, Ik or Kai C H I. And uh, when you write that in, in Greek, it has the form of an X. Which uh, gives uh, uh, another hieroglyphic that is uh, very often represented when you place a P, I guess it's like that, and the X. But really, the letter P, which uh, the letter that which in Latin is P, is really the letter R in Greek. So when you write uh, X and R, you are, of course, uh, symbolically pointing the activity of Ra, the fire. Because the R is a symbol of the fire in activity. And that Ra, of course, as you remember, if you know, is related with the uh, solar force among the Egyptian hieroglyphics or Egyptian myths. Among Ra, or the god Ra, is of course the solar light. So this uh, X and R, or X and P, as you see it in Latin way, is a very ancient symbol which describes 
what is that fire or that Christ? Because really, uh, in Gnosticism, we always emphasize that Christ is fire. And that is rooted in the Greek word. But really, the word Christos comes from the Greek word, Greek word which means anointed. An adjective of uh, creating to anoint. So you see that uh, also from this uh, X or CHI letter, Greek letter, come the word uh, ictus. And ictus means fish, which is of course the ancient symbol of Christianity. And if you see how the, the word uh, uh, or the letter X, for instance, if you modify the name, you find the word Chi, which in Taoism is represented by two fish, which are always in the form of an X, which is the symbol of yin yang, or the two forces. The two forces or two polarities, which are, of course, diluted in the universe. But really, yin yang are the two polarities of uh, the same energy, the qi or qi energy, represented in the X and P or XR or the Greek uh, alphabet. And it is because Christ is the source, is the energy from where everything emerges. When you observe uh, the infinite, which is formed by millions of galaxies, It brings into our memory the statement of Einstein, <coughs> who said, The infinite tends to a limit. And of course, by direct experience, we know that this infinite to which our galaxy belongs, tends to a limit, has approximately 100,000 of galaxies and more. But after this infinite, you find a, an empty space. And then you find another infinite. So, the theory about many infinites is something that we study in Gnosticism. Of course, just yes, imagine 100,000 and more galaxies organized just in one infinite. It acquires, of course, an intelligence in order to organize all of those galaxies in the infinite space. Just by observing that in the telescope, you, great, uh, you become amazed when observing all of those stars, galaxies, comets, planets, how they rotate in their, around their center, around their suns, and how everything is organized through many laws. Just to think, just to assume that that is there without any intelligence is cause foolishness. 
That intelligence is what we, the Gnostics, call Christ. Which is not a person. You have to uh, understand and to comprehend that intelligence can exist as itself, by itself, without form. This intelligence is not one, but is what we call the multiple perfect unity, which is everywhere and that uses the solar light as a vehicle to express itself. The first manifestation of that solar light is what in Kabbalah is called Ein Sof Or, the limited, limitless light, the first emanation of the unknowable, which is the abstract absolute space. That was the, what that light in of or is the first begotten, which is symbolized in different ways, in different myths. Of course, this ain't of or is what is called in esotericism the central sun, S U N, where all the intelligences that organize this infinite of Einstein exist. Of course, in Kabbalah, we associate this with the first emanation of that Ein Sof, which is called Keter and which is always associated with the infinite. And here, in that sign of the infinite, you find the first symbol or apparition of that hieroglyphic that we said, which is the X. That X, precisely in the very center of the symbol of the infinite, which is the eighth. The eighth, as you see, lying down in the symbol, symbol of the infinite. And in the very center, I repeat, you find the X. And it is because from the Ain Sof emerges that light and appears in Keter, which is the infinite. But of course, it's not one as we think. Because that infinite of symbol of the emergence of that light into the universe, into the infinite, uh, occurs in every single unit, in every single solar system. That is, we will say, the first birth or the first nativity of that that we call Christ, which is, of course, a multiplicity, but intelligence. That intelligence, uh, which is within the aim of, expresses itself through many beings. Because, you know, uh, according to the tree of life, that light descends into all the sephiroth in order to form the different intelligences or beings that exist in the universe. But when you, in a state of ecstasy, you penetrate into that which is the aims of all, and then you discover there is nothing but part of you is there because every single unit in the universe 
has a particle of that within the ends of. But only those that self-realize themselves, that awake all of those inner possibilities, are aware of how that light emerges and returns according to the sign of the infinite into the ends of or, which I, I repeat is called the central sun. And that's the intelligence of the infinite which acts everywhere. That's why we said his circumference, circumference is uh, everywhere. And the center or the nucleus, nowhere. But it's everywhere. The intelligence of the Ein Sof graduates, descends from the higher dimensions into the lower dimensions. Remember that we always state that we have seven dimensions. And when we talk about that Ein Sof, we are talking about the seventh dimension. But this seventh dimension is divided in two parts, one abstract and the other concrete. So, of course, the spiritual sun, the central sun of this infinite, is where all the intelligences abide, with the abstract of the world. No telescope can find, for instance, the ends of ore. That central sun. But in the state of ecstasy, the consciousness can see it. Because it's beyond the three-dimensional world. When you descend and uh, study only one part of that infinite which in this case will be a galaxy. And then you discover that that solar light, that force, a noble force that comes from the abstract space, organize the intelligences of any given galaxy. In this case, because we are in this galaxy that in this planet Earth we call it Milky Way, we know that all the stars, suns, which are approximately 100,000 uh, or millions of solar systems, which form this uh, galaxy, uh, are gravitating around the sun Sirius, physically speaking. But there is an intelligence in the galaxy that is called the polar sun, which is another spiritual sun. When all the intelligence of the galaxy converge, making it a multiple perfect unity, That is another unfoldment of that light that we call Christ. If you see all the constellations of our galaxy, how they mathematically submit themselves in the galaxy to the last of the galaxy, we have to admit that there is an intelligence there. The problem with people in this day and age is that they always make or want to make of that intelligence a human form or to give a human form to that intelligence to anthropomorphize 
You see, anthropos is human being in Greek, and formos or morphos, to give form of a human to that which has no human form. The intelligence that organizes all the intelligences of this uh, Milky Way is called the polar sun, which is located in the seventh dimension. In ecstasies also, you can visit the polar sun. And many myths, many cultures study that, because from there, from that polar sun, is how all of this uh, uh, galaxy depends. Any initiate that wants to enter into the mysteries in the internal worlds of the galaxy had to go directly to the polar sun, which we will say is the headquarters of that Christic intelligence. So that is another aspect, of course, of Christ which every galaxy has its own particular polar sun or intelligence. But physically, as I said, we also state that all the stars of this galaxy rotate around Sirius. But uh, there are many laws ignored by the people of the Earth in relation with the universe. Because, unfortunately... Scientists, astronomers only study the universe from the three-dimensional point of view, ignoring that the universe has seven dimensions. And that the intelligence that governs all of this uh, vast universe abides always in that uh, seventh dimension. Or within the unfoldments of that solar force that we call Ra, Christ, Allah, or different names. Ingri is how we call it in Christianity, which means Ignis Natura Renovatur Integra. Let us descend more into our solar system or into our organization of, of stars. Because you know that our sun, which is the center of this solar system, is a star among many. Of course, that star is a vehicle of that solar light. As many. It's a vehicle of Christ. This star belongs to the constellation of the Pleiades. So the Pleiades are mainly formed by eight stars, being the center, the Alcyon star, and rotating around it seven. Our sun is the seventh of the seven goats that are called also in different uh, traditions that go around Alcyon. So the Pleiades, of course, is an organization, a constellation that an intelligence organizes. We cannot admit that there is not intelligence in the Pleiades or in this system of stars to which are Son belongs to. And that intelligence is Christ. So all the stars, are, including our sun, rotates around Alcyon. But there is another intelligence that is not seen by the telescope, which is called the equatorial sun. The equatorial sun, which is the spiritual sun to which this constellation of the Pleiades refers or are submitted to. In that equatorial sun, we find, for instance, that which we call the astral sun, which you always refer. 
in different uh, lectures. The astral signature of that astral light in his ascension. Every constellation is submitted to uh, different intelligences in their own circle. So you see how that intelligence that we call Christ is multiple. That's why it is symbolized in uh, Buddhism with that uh, Avalokiteshvara having many hands but it's always the same intelligence Avalokiteshvara with many hands symbolize the multiplicity within the unity the intelligence of the equatorial sun the spiritual sun the astral sun obeys the polar sun, and the polar sun to the central sun. And this is how that same light organizes all the universe. Of course, if we take only our solar system, and then we find the intelligence that organizes the solar system in the very heart of the sun. So therefore, if we, for instance, want to know about the constellation of the Pleiades to which this sun belongs, we have to go directly to the heart temple of the sun. And from the heart temple of the sun to the equatorial sun, and from the equatorial sun, if we want to know about the galaxy, we go on to the polar sun with the same light, with the same electrons, the same force. And can, we can go beyond to the central sun, which is the Ains of Or. And then we see how that ray of creation descends in different levels through the suns, through the stars. That's why it is written that Christ, the X, is crucified in every single cosmic unit. Here, for instance, if we said, okay, let us go now into the planet Earth. And then we discover that the planet Earth is a planet that sustains its life from the solar light of our, of our sun. And then we discover that all the life that exists on this planet exists thanks to that solar light that is wisely organized everywhere. And then we discover that the earth rotates around this star and that takes 365 days, a few seconds, a few minutes more, in order to give a complete round or rotation around the sun. But during the rotation, the four seasons happen. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. And then we see how that solar light organizes the life of this planet Earth through the four seasons. And if we place every season in the very end of the X, of the lines of the X, and then we understand how Christ is organizing the life of the planet by his rotation around. And that's why the symbol of Christ is always the cross. Because it is through the cross in different ways, in the micro or in the macro, how that Christ, how that fire, how that solar light transforms nature and the cosmos. In this planet Earth, we celebrate the nativity of that solar light, the 25th of December. And of course, when we investigate many myths of different masters 
or avatars, messengers, that came to this humanity, we discovered that many of them coincide with the date, 25th of December, the date of, of their birth. And it is because it is not related to their physical birth, but it is related to the spiritual development. Because remember that we said the intelligence that we are talking here is spiritual. It doesn't belong to the three-dimensional world. It belongs to the seventh dimension. But in the planet Earth, of course, that solar light sacrifices itself every year. We know that according to the movement of the sun, the elliptic movement of the sun, it moves according to the translation of the earth or the rotation of the earth around it from south to north and from north to south. There are two vortices that assimilate that solar energy in the planet earth which are called south and north pole. The north Paul, precisely, is that vertex, or that chakra, we will say in Sanskrit, that brings the energy into the earth. It's a Kura transformation. The South Pole also, of course, obtained that light. But really, the main chakra that sucks the energy of the, of the solar light is the North Pole. That's why you find in different myths, especially in the Nordic myth, how they state that everything comes from the North. Asgard is in the North. In this day and age, for instance, you find the symbol that is very, very, very vulgarized of Santa Claus, which Hollywood make money with it, which is a symbol, of course, very ancient, but unfortunately was taken by Coca-Cola in order to make business. But that symbol is very ancient. Santa Claus, of course, exists as Christ exists. But it's not a person. He's not a long bearded old man, you know, as many think. It's just an energy that comes every year through the North Pole, which is the solar light. Simple. The Aztecs were celebrating that in ancient times. And they always used three primary colors in order to invoke that energy. But they didn't call it Santa Claus. They didn't call it Quetzalcoatl or Ometecutli. Different names. According to the relation of nature. Or the forces of nature. But in order to invoke those forces of the north, they were burning, making rituals, burning co corals, seashells with the colors, mainly colors, red, white, and black, which are the main colors that appear always in the vesture of Santa Claus. Red, white, and black, which represents the different activities of that solar energy when entering through the North Pole. The red is a very alive energy of the sun. The white is a purity, the intelligence of that solar force. And the black symbolizes when that energy enters into the hydrogen, into the carbon, into any element of the earth, becomes black, meaning that is enclosed, like in the charcoal. But when you light a charcoal, then that solar light is liberated, and you call it fire. So that fire, that solar light, is within the air, is within the water, is within the earth, and all the elements. That is what we call Christ. And of course, I repeat, 
The main source is the North Pole. How it descends into this matter, which is a Latin word for mother, earth. And of course, this is how mother earth, mother nature, is symbolized by a virgin. They call it the virgin of the sea. Because all the source of life from this mother nature is in the ocean. And that's why the priests of the Aztec civilization were burning those seashells with those colors in order to invoke the forces. It's a perfect ritual in order to invoke the forces of the north. Solar forces. Of course, in the Bible, the prophet Jonah also was performing this ritual. Because Jonah, as you recall, is that prophet that was working with the waters, the waters of the ocean. When we study the Aztec calendar, we amazingly discover that all the wisdom written in that stone called Aztec calendar is related with the movement of the sun in relation with the earth. In the very center of that uh, solar stone, the Aztec calendar, you find the Nahuilin, or what the Master Samael called the Rune Olin, which is nothing else than the Rune Gibur of the Nordics in activity. When that rune Gibur rotates, and then you find the swastika, which is the same X in activity. So that is called by the Aztecs Nahuilin. And of course, in the very center of that solar stone, you find four suns. The sun of water, the sun of air, the sun of fire, and the sun of earth. And hieroglyphically, symbolically, describe how the previous root races were destroyed. And how this root race will be destroyed by the same fire. By the same Christ. It is stated that the children of the first son were devoured by tigers. Were devoured by tigers. The tiger in Aztec symbology symbolizes fire. It says that the, the children of the second sun were destroyed by hurricanes. The sun of air. The children of the third sun, which is the fire, were destroyed by the fire of volcanoes. Called the Lemurian root race. And the children of the fourth sun, which is the Atlantean civilization, as you know, were destroyed by the waters. By the sun of water. So were destroyed by the same energy, the solar force, the Christ. Because Christ, I repeat, is an energy that abides everywhere. And that's why Peter states in his second epistle, when he says, in the time of the end, the elements will burn with fervent heat, and the earth and everything that is within will burn alive. Talking about this root race. The Aztecs state in that stone that the children of the fifth son, which are we, the root, the Aryan root race, will be destroyed by earthquakes and fire. <coughs> so you see now that when they mention the children means the outcome of the transformation of the energy or the forces of the sun in the planet because everything is related with fire and fire is precisely Christ but 
when the outcome of the fire it doesn't work, it's not good, the fire burns it and creates new things. What the fire wants is for every single unit that is in charge, that he is in charge of, <coughs> to be aware, to be conscious, cognizant of it, in order to help it into his work. So that intelligence, of course, abides within us. That solar force. Christ is within everywhere. But to retain, to transform that energy in us is precisely what we have to learn. And that's why the doctrine of how we transform and how we permute ourselves into solar beings is written in different religions. You see the permutation of the animal into a human is something that only Christ can perform. It's something that only the fire can do. And of course that fire, as you know, abides, transforms into the body as a creator and uh, dwells in their sexual glands. And that's why the great arcana, the secret of secrets, sexual magic, is a way in which Christ works with. Paul of Tarsus stated in Galatians, the chapter 3, that to Abraham was given all the promises and to his seed. And he says, but it is not written into his seeds as of many, but only as one, to your seed, which is Christ. And of course, that's why people mistake and think that that seed or the generation of Abraham into this David and to etc. etc. will become Jesus Christ the Messiah. Without uh, uh, investigating deep into this, because Christ is not Jesus of Nazareth, even though he incarnated it. And it still is within him. But Jesus of Nazareth, the master of Veramento, that came to this planet Earth in order to represent the drama, this cosmic drama, and of how we incarnate and permutate ourselves into solar beings, he came in order to represent that. To show us physically how to do it. And people misunderstood the message. And thought that he was the only one. We will fall into the same mistake. If we think. That Buddha. Gautama Sakyamuni. Is the only one. And the only Buddha. If there is no more Buddhas. If we understand that Buddha Gautama Sakyamuni came in order to represent the way in order to become a Buddha and that each one has his own Buddha within, then we understand that Christ is a fire, is an energy that is within everybody and that we have to awake that energy and to develop that energy and Jesus of Nazareth came in order to teach us how. But he is not the only one that did that transformation. Many masters in the past performed that transformation in themselves. But humanity didn't know. Because in order to receive the knowledge, in order to Christify yourself, or to become a solar man, you needed to awake your consciousness. 
to be aware of certain elements that you have within. And you had to pass many tests in the College of Initiates in order to receive the clue. And when you were doing it, you were always having enough in order not to uh, publish, not to talk in public about the secrets. Those initiates that break their oath and were publicly teaching this in ancient times were killed. In the Aztec temples, for instance, that the anthropologists of this day and age they uh, think and they said that the Mayans and the Aztecs were sacrificing human beings. Well, let me tell you one thing. Aztecs and Mayans knew about these secrets. And they had many initiates. And sometimes many of those initiates were publishing, were talking about things that they shouldn't. So they were, of course, killed in the temples. Because that was the rule. Those beings were managing death and life. They had the power. And that's why they were killing and taking their hearts and burning that heart and throwing it into the four winds for sacrilege. And of course, now in this day and age, the white lodge, the beings which are solar men, feeling pity for this humanity, gave the permission to talk in public about this. That's why in this day and age you find books and many lectures, and we talk openly about the transformation of the sexual energy and how to enter into the path. But if we were in the times of the Aztecs of Mayans, they will take us there and, and, and sacrifice us and with a knife will take us our heart and burn us. Many initials in the past tried to talk about this and they were burned alive. But now the great law is given to this humanity the opportunity to see the secrets and to discover that the solar light which sacrifices itself, this cosmic drama that is repeated every single year on the earth in nature, is something that happened not only in this planet Earth, but in all the planets, in all the suns. Because that energy called Christ is a force that gives its life for everything in the universe. Do not think that we, the people of the Earth, are privileged by knowing how to walk on the path of the Lord, Christ. No. The planets know it as well. But uh, there are differences of humanities. In other planets, when the Lord incarnates, when that solar light incarnates in a being and teaches, they don't kill him. They worship him and follow his rules. Only in this planet Earth, we have the custom of killing Christ. Jesus of Nazareth was killed 2,000 years ago. Because his teachings were opposed to those of that uh, time. And not only him. In the past, many great niches were killed here. This humanity is bar barbaric. Barbarian. But uh, even though uh, some people think that we are uh, special. We have nothing special. But uh, the law has pity on us. And of course, when you observe the sun traveling from the south to the north, that's why you see here in the north. Right now, the days are very short and the nights very long. Because the solar light is in the south. And nature is weak here. We are entering into winter. And nature is dying. And you know that we need a solar light in order for nature to revive, to resuscitate. 
So the 25th of December exactly in this planet Earth starts the moving of the sun, of the solar light towards the north. So the sun already is in the south. Now it's going to start. The, 15, the, the 25th of December is going to start his movement towards the north, to the north pole. And that's why the 25th is when Santa Claus comes. Well, that solar light starts again to bring a new spring, little by little. And when the sun moves and passes the equatorial sun from south to north, and then we celebrate the crucifixion, which sometimes falls in March, sometimes in April. But that is the crucifixion of the solar light, of the solar force in the planet, in nature. And that is a drama that repeats, I repeat, every single year. Whether you are Christian or an atheist. Because there are many atheists in this day and age that say, I don't believe in that. So, anyhow, they receive that solar bless every year, whether they believe it or not. Because the sun, whether we believe it or not, will begin its journey, the 25th of December, to the north. And will be crucified in March and April, when passing the equatorial sun. And we give life, no matter who you are, or which religion you believe, that sort of light will give you life again and again and again and again. That is sacrifice of the Lord. And this is something that we have to understand and comprehend. It belongs to nature. It doesn't belong to any religion. The benefits of that sacrifice goes into your body, into your mind, into your psyche, into your spirit, if you know how. But commonly, the energy goes into your physical body and nourishes your physical body, and then you squander the energy in different ways. And that is the problem. Humanity doesn't know how to take advantage of that solar, that Christic force, in order to give life to themselves. There are many Christians now that call themselves Christians, and that believe in the Bible and the Gospels, but they also squander the Christic energy, even if they love too much their, their Lord. Because they think that they have to believe in Jesus. Jesus, of course, is a master. That is discouraged with all of his followers. Because none of them transmute their sexual Christic energy. They accept their teachings, but they don't practice them. In order for us, to be born again, as Christ said through the lips of Jesus, we have to be born by the waters and the Spirit. The waters and the Spirit are the symbol of this thing that we are talking. The Spirit is the solar spirit of life that is called Santa Claus. And that comes and plays the gifts into the heart of those that are working with that fire, with that force. Every single year, the 25th, that fire enters into the planet through the water, through the air, to the fire, to the earth, and into the body of the animals, plants, human beings, and minerals. Every single year enters and gives that gift which is life. But who is the one that retains that gift and develops that gift in order to give life to his tree of life? Or what the people celebrate as Christmas tree? What is the Christmas tree? You see, the Christmas Christ that we say that is a solar energy. And the mass is a rite. Christmas, 
a transformation or a rite in which the solar energy is transformed into life. And the tree of life is always studied in Kabbalah, represented in the spinal column of every single person. The spinal column is the tree of life. If you have very uh, your spinal column healthy, your whole body is healthy, is strong. If you damage your spinal column, you can damage your brain, you can damage other other limbs of your body. So that is the medulla of the body is the spinal column. So then, the tree of life, the Christmas tree, symbolizes the spinal column. And all the lights are the senses of the soul that we need to awake. In order to understand what, what Christ is. So when that light is shining in our spinal column with the seven churches that are described in the book of Revelation, or the seven chakras, and all the powers of that tree of life, then Santa Claus comes and deliver your gift. So we say that comes through the north into the chimney, which is also a particular north, which is the chakra Saha Sarara, or the church of Laodicea. This is where you enter. And this is precisely what is written in the Acts of the Apostles. That when the Apostles were reunited, celebrating it, Tongues of fire came floating above their heads. And that was the fire of the Holy Ghost. Or the fire of Santa Claus. Which is a force. And that was the gift that they received. They received many gifts. Because remember that is written there that anybody can receive different gifts according to the transformation or permutation of this energy. But in this day and age, people do not understand what type of gift or what is that that the Bible calls a gift. It's a power. It's not something that automatically you will receive. You have to deserve it. Until you become, as a child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is written. That's why Christmas, the nativity of Christ, is for children. Do we have mind of children? What type of mind do we have? To have a mind of children is symbolized in the pine tree. The pine tree are related with the forces of childhood. The forces of Aquarius. The mind. Observe your mind. Is your mind innocent? Did you acquire that innocence in your mind? Only a Buddha has that type of mind. But that's why it's written that in order to, for Christ to descend on you, you have to be united with your own particular individual Buddha that gives you that illumination because that was the word Buddha means, illuminated, enlightened one. And that's symbolized in the tree of life, in the Christmas tree. That is a, a symbol taken by, uh, from the Nordics. Because this symbol is everywhere. But of course, as you know, many Christians have their Christmas tree, these lights, but they don't know anything about this. Christmas is just a business in this day and age. Many people celebrate Christmas and when Christmas comes they ignore about the relation of this right of the solar light with the earth and they just worry about what are the gifts that somebody is going to give them and what type of gifts they should give to their relatives. And everybody's thinking in that. You go on TV, you find precisely a lot of uh, commercials, advertisement in order to give uh, for Christmas. So the Black Lodge has commercialized everything. Take all the symbols and mock the symbols of religions. And that's why 
people celebrate in this day and age, all of these uh, uh, holidays, celebrations, but ignore the meaning of them. This drama, of course, of the cosmic Christ and the way in which we can assimilate that solar force is a secret related with the spinal column. Remember that the spinal column has 33 vertebrae. And that's why Master Jesus is written, he lived 33 years. The Masons talk about 33 degrees. And it is because in order to develop that energy, we had to do it in the 33 degrees. But different times, different ways. You find that in the moment in which Christ is born, according to the Gospels, the angel Gabriel announces always that. And this angel Gabriel, or Geburael, represents the perfect man that has to appear within each one of us by knowing how to transform the lunar forces that mechanically act in the physical body. And of course, Mary, the mother of Jesus, represents Mother Nature. And as Mother Nature is in the planet Earth as well, Mother Nature is represented in our physical body. This uh, nature in us has to become virgin. To become virgin is to become chaste, but not the chastity that people think or have uh, the idea of is scientific chastity. When we enter into scientific chastity and then our own matter, our own body becomes virgin. And only a virgin can give birth to that light within. Do you understand that? That means that a fornicator, an adulterer, Somebody that is, that is squandering the sexual force is not a virgin. We are not talking here about that virginity that in this DNA people think. That is just the, related with the sexual organs. If you never had sexual act, you are virgin. If the woman has the hymen, it's virgin. No, it's not that virginity. This is the virginity of the psyche. The virginity of the soul, in which we learn how to transform the sexual energy in scientific chastity. And this is how our polluted, sinful nature, sinful matter, becomes virgin. That's why it is represented in the uh, Canon 6 of the Tarot the whore and the virgin. But where are that virgin? What is that whore? Well, the whore is the physical body. Because we are polluting, prostituting, or prostituting, I mean, the physical body through our vices. Observe how we behave sexually. Obviously, there is not a single virgin in humanity. Sexual degeneration is even applauded. When somebody goes out and says, oh, I was this, I was that, and start talking about his or her degeneration, everybody says, oh, he, 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 he deserves an applause because he is daring to talk about his de or her degeneration. So everybody, of course, has within a whore. This is a physical body. We have to make it this matter to begin with the physical body to make it vision. Which means to know how to uh, save the sexual force. And all the sexual force, but all the forces that enter into the physical body, the solar forces. 
When we learn that, in the end, our matter becomes pregnant with the fire that we call Kundalini. And that's just the first step to awake the energy of the Kundalini is to awake Hercules. This is the symbol in Greek mythology. Heracles. Hera is the mother. And Cleos means the aura. Heracles means the aura of Hera. Or the fire of Hera within the body. That's why it is written that when Hercules was born, when Heracles was born, Mercury took him. And that Mercury is precisely the symbol of the sublimation of the sexual energy. He took him to Hera in order to suck the breast of Hera and to give him immortality. And it's written that when Mercury put Hercules into the breast of Hera, the wife of Zeus, Jupiter, Hera was sleeping. And when she awoke and noticed that Hercules was sucking her breasts, she was angry and pushed him away. But Hercules already took a lot of milk, a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, a lot of energy from nature. And it is written that that milk, because he was sucking the breast so strong, that when he pushed him away, the milk sprawled out into the space and the Milky Way was born. Of course, that is a symbol, as you know, if you read that between parentheses, then you understand. The Milky Way, the galaxy, was born from the breast of Hera, a beautiful symbol of Christ, of the aura, of the Divine Mother, nature, or, or, or Cosmic Mother. So then, you have to understand and comprehend that. Do you worship the Divine Mother Mary? Are you Catholic? Or are you Hindu? You worship, uh, for instance, uh, the Divine Mother, Kundalini, Shakti. <coughs> it has many names in, in, in Hinduism. Different aspects. Do you worship the Divine Mother? Well, let understand and comprehend the Divine Mother expresses itself to your matter. Because that's what the physical body is, a matter. That's why in Kabbalah, Malkut is represented by a female aspect. And Malkut is a physical body. You want to receive Christ? Well, make of your physical body, of your Malkut, a virgin. Means chaste. And that starts by avoiding the abominable spasm, the filthy orgasm of animals. Because the animals cannot retain Christ. Because they naturally, mechanically, instinctively fornicate. But we learn, we receive knowledge in order not to fornicate. In which ones mute the sexual energy, and then our matter, our body becomes virgin. And from that virgin is born the child. That child that everybody worships and celebrates the 25th. That child was born in Jesus. That child was born in Moses, in Buddha, in Krishna. That child is fire. That fire is Christ, the Son of God. All the first begotten. The first emanation of the unknowable divine. Which is the abstract, absolute space that we can call it father, cosmic father. That has no shape, has no form. That is the first step. But that Christ has to be born not only in the physical body. That Christ has to be born in the vital body astral body or emotional body, mental body, body of will, body of the consciousness, and the body of the spirit. 
Those are the seven steps that we have to take. And Christ as fire has to enter into every single body or every single part that we are. So the first matter that becomes virgin is the physical body and then the vital body and then the emotional body. So Christ has to be born within your emotions, within your mind, within your will. You know that phrase that is written, Father, if it's possible, take this cup of me, but not my will, but thine be done. That is only possible to utter if we receive Christ in our own particular will. What type of will do we, do, do we have? That's the birth. The nativity of Christ, you know, within the human being, is in the steps. It's not like the common and, uh, and, uh, and ordinary Christians in this day and age think, the fundamentalists. That you just raise your arm and you said, I accept Jesus, and then Christ enters into you automatically. No. It doesn't enter. You have to become a virgin first. Christ was born from Mary, a virgin. It doesn't came like that. He needed a woman in order to be born. And of course, that woman was crucified as well. Or crucified herself as well. And of course, if Christ was crucified in the planet, or is crucified every year in the planet in order to give life, in order to resuscitate in all the elements, because after March or April, after the celebration of the crucifixion, you see how nature goes happily, full of light. The plant kingdom, the animal kingdom. In Europe, for instance, animals are in charge with sexual force and they start to multiply. Because this is the only way that they, they do it, because they are not uh, 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 intellectual. They don't know anything about But all nature multiplies. It's full of light. Full of life. Same thing has to be with us. We want Christ to express itself not in the animal way, not in the plant way, but in the conscious way. Because this is what Christ wants in every single person, every human being, to express itself in the very cognizant way intelligent way he wants to make of us a vehicle of intelligence an animal cannot do that because the animal acts instinctually but in order for us to do that we have to sacrifice the animal part of us and that is only possible to the crucifixion all that which is animal has to die because remember that the child, when he's born into the human, when that matter is virgin, that virgin is unstable among the animals. That's unfortunate. You see how Joseph and Mary, who represent the two polarities, yin and yang, gave birth to Christ. But unfortunately, when that Christ is being born into the physical body, still there is a lot of animals there. The animals of desire that everybody has within. Lust, anger, greed, envy, laziness, gluttony, etc., etc. All of those elements have to die, have to be crucified. The terrestrial man has to die in order for the heavenly man to be born. And that, of course, is a process as well. It doesn't mean that you had to do it only in one time. You had to do it seven times, seven times. You had to die in your animal behavior in the physical plane, in the vital plane, in the emotional plane, in the mental plane, in the plane of will, in the plane of consciousness, and even in the spirit. You had to become completely absorbed by that fire. Do you think that Jesus of Nazareth became Jesus of Nazareth just like that? 
He was working very hard in order to transform himself, as well as Moses and all the great prophets, avatars and masters. They worked hard in themselves. So that light was emerging little by little until they became the same light, part of it. And that is what is called to Christify yourself, to become a real, a true Christian. It's a process. So the same drama that you see in nature, you have to repeat it in your own particular individual body, mind and spirit. In the end, you understand what what, what is uh, the nativity of Christ. Christ has to be born in your heart. You find that when Christ comes, the shepherds come and receive the notice, the news, that the Lord is being born in the stable. People think that the shepherds that are written in the Gospels are people that were at that time taking care of the sheep. And they ignore that even in this day and age, those people that are taking care of other people, other souls, they're called pastors. Pastor is a Latin Spanish word for shepherd. So if you want to receive the birth of the Lord in your heart, you have to be a shepherd. In other words, you have to work for him. You have to spread the word, the real knowledge. To become a shepherd is to become an instructor, to become a missionary. There are different levels of shepherds. That's why in the Bible is written that the shepherd David came the king. Moses was also a shepherd. And Jesus is represented as being a shepherd as well. It's a symbol of those that work for the good of humanity. You see how the shepherd takes care of the sheep? Do you see that uh, a shepherd is uh, kicking the sheep? Or uh, slaughtering the sheep? A real good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. It is written like that. So that sheep, of course, or those sheep, are the representation of the soul. The animal soul of good people that wants to become human. So in other words, the shepherd is a human and the sheep is an animal. The symbol of that is simple, that the shepherd is already in the level of human being. That shepherd reached the level of Tiferet, the level of mastery. And as a shepherd, he's dealing with sheep, with those souls that still are not in that level, but are meek souls that are really following the, the word of the Lord. And at that time, of course, there were many of them that were working with the souls of people that were still intellectual animals. And as intellectual animals, but meek, following the word written in any sacred book, the angel appears to them and said, you are shepherds. So there are good news for you. Because you are working for the souls, now the Lord is coming and being born within you in another level. As light. And then there are happiness. In Bethlehem. Or in the house of the bread of wisdom. And that Bethlehem is Belen. The pineal gland. This is where the Lord is being born. And that little city of Bethlehem is a pineal gland which is surrounded by other cities of Judah, the brain, 
which are, of course, the mind of Jerusalem, the mind, but you find all of those uh, defects, vices, and errors that we have in abundance. So all the people, the mind, are here in the brain, but in the middle is the pineal gland, the smallest of all the cities where the Lord is being born. And that is the symbol of the shepherds that come to celebrate the birth of Christ. The same has to happen within us, in different levels. And what about the three wise men? The same symbol. But these are the same shepherds that are already dressed with the Lord, with the light, with the solar bodies. Three steps. Wise men. Wise comes from the word wisdom. Wisdom in Hebrew is chokhmah. Chokhmah is the second sephirah, which is attributed to the most beautiful atoms of that energy that we call Christ. So chokhmah, Christ, wisdom, makes a wise to be wise is to have Christ within. So the three wise men are three steps or three categories. Three degrees in which we incarnate the Lord. In other parts they are represented with a crown. Crown in Hebrew is Keter, the father. The crown of life is Christ. They are being crowned already. Meaning that they are kings as David, as Solomon. Because Christ is within. They are anointed by fire. That is what we call Messiah. Messiah is uh, uh, the same as Christ. Or an avatar. Somebody that is a vehicle of the solar light. Christ expresses itself everywhere. So that's why these three wise men are three levels in which Christ expresses itself within those that are already walking on the path. A black wise man, a yellow wise man, wise man and a white. The three colors of alchemy. The first one, of course, is black. Because when you receive the Lord, your matter is black. The fire is still enclosed within different parts of your being, with your consciousness, with your body. And you need to liberate it, like the charcoal needs to be to liberate the fire. When that fire is completely liberated and the charcoal disappears, the blackness, then the whiteness appears, which is the purity, the virginity of the fire within the matter. To become a white wise man is not easy. It's the most difficult part. There are many initiates that enter into the first part and become black wise men or black kings. Which between parentheses in Tifereth you find the word Malachim in Yetzirah, the word of Yetzirah, the word of the angels. Malachim or Malachim. That means Kings or queens. Tifereth. At that level is when you receive the level of Malachim or king. Only in that level you can become a wise man. The incarnation of Chokhmah, wisdom. But in the beginning, as the Master Samael explains in his books, you don't notice the fire within the black because that black has to annihilate all that charcoal, that black which is within, which is called lust, ego. All that negativity, animal desire that we have within. And by annihilating it, the consciousness, which is fire, which is Christ, is liberated. And then the initial is shining and shining and seeing more the light and become white. As a white magician, as a white magi, 
as a white king or magi, as a white magi, he appears after defeating Lucifer in one step. This is what happened with Jesus. He appears before the multitudes after defeating Lucifer within as a white magician. But the path has to, to, to be walk on a higher level in order to become the yellow wise man. The yellow wise man is above the white. Yellow is the color of gold. That gold has to appear in the initiate. And for that, he has to purify himself very much. And of course, that goal appears when the individual is resurrected with a resurrection. And that gold, that's why the metal gold is a symbol of the sun. You see, because silver is a symbol for the moon, but the gold for the sun. If you are becoming a yellow wise man, it's because you are already a solar man. You are completely purified. You are a vehicle of, as the metal gold is, a vehicle of the solar light. You are also a vehicle of the solar light. You are a gold man, a solar man. You are that because you built a diamond soul. You see, a diamond soul, this stone is also related to the sun. So, to have a diamond in your finger or in your necklace is easy. But to make of your soul a diamond, that's very difficult. To make of your soul a diamond is to possess the philosophical stone. To be a resurrected master that with dominion over the four elements. Because you are, of course, in the very center of the cross, of the X. And from that very center, you command the water, the air, the fire, and the earth. Because you are the vehicle of that light, which is in the center of the sun, in the center of the earth, in the center of the Pleiades, in the center of the galaxy, in the center of the universe. But that light transforms you in different levels as well. There are many resurrected masters that have dominion only in the solar system. Others that have dominion over the galaxy. Others that have dominion in the infinite. Because that light transforms you in different steps. Among the resurrected masters, not all of them have that expansion. Only those that have the Wisdom of many infinites can enter into the absolute and become paramartha satyas. That's why when we refer to the Master Jesus of Nazareth, the Master of Veramento, we always bow behind him because he is a paramartha satya. He has the wisdom of many infinites within himself. He came to this planet Earth in order to help. That all their resurrected masters, they have the wisdom of galaxies. They have the solar light expands. It depends of your work. It depends of your consciousness. You see, there are always different hierarchies, even among the resurrected, among the yellow magicians. So there is an activity of Christ. It is a graduation, a system of awakening the solar powers that are latent within each one of us. Do you have questions?
The question is, what about the star of Bethlehem? Well, the star of Bethlehem is our own particular individual being. It's our own particular monad. Because each one has its own particular star of Bethlehem. You see, star of Bethlehem, I told you, that the pineal gland is related with Bethlehem, with the city of Bethlehem, where the Lord is born. And of course, that pineal gland is also uh, related with the star of Bethlehem, the star that guides the magician. That star, of course, is a self-remembrance. That's why we always state that we have to remember ourselves, that we have to follow our own particular star, because all that we point here, the aims of, in the aims of, we have our own particular atom or star that is connected with our own particular physical body and consciousness. That particular Ein Sof or star, which is connected with Christ above, was to unfold, to develop all of the powers of the Lord within, within us. And that light from up there guides that Ein Sof and descends according to our degree in order for us to develop. To follow that star means to be a magician. Because remember that the three wise men were the ones that were following that star. So if you want to follow that star, you have to become a priest. Which is uh, the same as magician. To priest or magician, to become a priest or magician doesn't mean uh, to perform rituals. But only one. The ritual of transmutation of your solar force. Yeah. Yeah, of course. There's another question here. That Herod, that Christ has to be in secret because of Herod. If you go in the beginning, you know, that's precisely a good question. Because in the beginning, when you are enthusiastic and awakening and developing your inner self, you start talking and you want everybody to follow the path. And then you find people that are very skeptical and start putting doubts in your mind. That's Herod. Herod represents the world. And there is a Herod inside of the mind of everybody. Even us have our own particular Herod. Put doubts in our minds. And we go and talk with another Herod, which is Mary committing adultery with Herodias. Humanity. Because Herodias precisely represents the whore. Humanity that worship negativity. So the herald of everybody within is Mary with her audience. And if we talk to them about Christ, immediately they feel threatened. And they want to kill the child that is within us. So that's why when we start awakening and having experiences, we have to have our mouths shut. Behaving as anybody, hiding the Lord. Because in order for us to go into humanity and help, we, the Lord needs to grow inside. But if the Lord is a child, remember that at that time, Herod killed many children. Only those that are smart, they are saved. Christ is the light that unfolds in many lights. Christ is one, is the hints of all, is the ray of Okidanok, the central sun. Christ is the holy trinity, Keter, Chochma, Bina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose most beautiful atoms shine in Chochma, wisdom. Christ unfolds into the couple, which is Abba and Aima, fathering mother. The Divine Mother Kundalini is also Christ. Christ unfolds into the twelve apostles, 
So every single apostle is part of that light, is part of Christ, symbol. Christ unfolds into the 24 lights, or the 24 elders, which are written in the book of Revelation. Every single elder is Christ in itself in a different level. To the end, Christ unfolds into 48, 49 fires. To put in activity all of those parts of Christ within is to connect all the bulbs in order to have light in your home from the same electricity. You have another question? So remember that Christ is everywhere. And that is what in Greek mythology is called Zeus, Jupiter, the father of all gods. It's symbolized in many ways. So, thank you very much. If you have more questions, you can write in the forum and we will answer that. Have a happy Christmas or Merry Christmas. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,